come to our country. We will give you wait that sounds Russian. But anyways. Well hey, well hey, oh my god, that was that was crazy. Oh my god, thank you all so much for joining us on this special crazy uh YouTube video or set of videos I'm gonna record today with my boy Saba. Man, nice background, bro. Are you um clearly you're not actually outside, are you? Are you actually inside? Yeah, I'm outside. Uh because I'm in studio <laughs> behind me. It's a really nice uh, sunny day at uh <laughs> half past six in the evening. <laughs> uh, I suppose with the weather right now, it probably wouldn't be too hard to believe. I mean, you've got blue skies there. This very true. Actually, it's pretty cloudy right now. I mean, I'm probably about ten miles away from you, and the weather seems so different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, man. So uh, first thing is first, man. Let's quickly have a little chat about Tesla, man. Um, the reason I bring this up is because bear with me, bro. Hold on, hold on, man. I'm just saying. All right, um, I'm just saying that. Like every friggin' car manufacturer out there is releasing electric cars, including Alfa Romeo, bro. What is going on, man? No, they've gone to the dark side. <laughs> We're really so not it's, happy. It's happening, man. And I'm like, I, I was like, man, if I was if I was Elon Musk right now and I wasn't fathering ten children, um, you know, like, would I be worried about this whole situation? And um, I. I can't help but feel like me right now, like we're looking to buy our next car, right? All cards on the table, we're on the market, we're, we're, we're going to go towards a one car solution. Um, and we're looking at, I'm going to get ready for the virtual eggs to be thrown at me now. I'm, I'm ready for it, man. Uh, we are going to go electric, right? So I'm going to start dodging, dodging now. <laughs> and like, we're like, if this, if this was actually five years ago, it would be a Tesla, man. It would be, right? But man there's there's the frigging honda the, the hyundai ionic 5 there's the kia ev6 there's frigging i mean dare i say it even the skoda enyaq there's like there's like crap loads out there man and i'm thinking man like well should will people remain loyal to tesla and is there is there a significant reason do you think for them to, to be worried about this whole situation um I think Tesla know that manufacturers are going to catch up. That's a given. Yeah. Um, Tesla did have a head start. You know, they jumped onto the electric bandwagon. What they did very successfully was make an electric car cool, which no manufacturer had been able to do up until this point. But they always knew manufacturers would catch up. And I think that's why a few years ago they got into bed with Fiat. Uh, Fiat Group had started spreading their tow concept. So Fiat would pay Tesla to cool their cars in CO2 emissions to get them a fine down from the EU. And oh, I didn't know that. Blimey. Yeah, so, so what you can do is, say if your average fleet of cars is way below the CO2 threshold, you can sell your free CO2 space to a manufacturer who's over the CO2 threshold. Oh my um, God. That's what Fiat did. So Fiat bought them from Tesla. Um, and got them below the threshold, well, closer to the threshold, so they had to pay less in emissions fine. So these, uh, hold on a second, so, so these, these, um, these targets that need to be hit by manufacturers, it's almost, it's almost like an industry target <clears throat> rather than a manufacturer specific target, right? Is that right? Yeah, so last time I checked, the target was 88 grams of CO2 per kilometer. Um, so it had to be below 88 per kilometer. Right. Um, and for every gram you are over per kilometer, you have to pay 80 euros. So, wow. okay. so you can imagine if you're 10 over, that's 800 euros. And if you're building 10,000 cars. You oh, it's per build. car. Per car. Oh, damn. Wow. Okay. So you're paying hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions in fines uh, because your average fleet is over. So that's why manufacturers. Uh, approach Tesla and Fiat were willing to pay the most for it. So what Tesla is doing is diversifying. It's making money from other means other than just building cars. They're, they're building home batteries, they're selling yeah. their tokens to other manufacturers, excuse me. Uh, they're also selling equipment and, and uh, intellectual data to other manufacturers. So they are diversifying. I do think that Tesla 
bandwagon will slow down. I don't think it'll tail off. I think I'll come up with more products into the future that are still cool, yeah, still yeah, yeah. Fill, uh what they want. But I think eventually manufacturers will catch up and they will be. That's that's uh, that's interesting, man. I think I think the fact that they obviously diversifying into other areas will to somewhat kind of. Um, it will somewhat negate the impact of the increase in manufacturers providing electric vehicles because they've got all this extra revenue coming from other sources. Therefore, there's probably not a lot to worry about. I mean, here's here's my thing, right? And you know, you uh, whether you, I'm sure you agree with me on, on this one that um, you know one of the kind of biggest reasons to not buy a Tesla. Well, I suppose there's two main reasons. Number one is obviously price. And number two is, um, you could argue, looks, right? And I think that what we're seeing from the rest of the market is obviously um, a lot cheaper electric cars. Actually, I wouldn't say a lot cheaper, but they are they are somewhat cheaper, right? I mean, if you take a typical Kia EV6 or a Honda i 5 you're still looking at the mid 40s, close to 50 mark, right, in terms of price. So it's not yeah. that much cheaper, really, but in my view, they, they look a lot better. So. Yeah, man, it's it's going to be interesting, man. Um, we'll see what happens with regards to Tesla going forward. Yeah, the way I liken Tesla to in terms of diversifying, it's a bit like certain Arabic countries. Um, they they're not just uh, you know they're selling oil. Oh, uh, like Dubai. Yeah, like you know those sorts of countries and and other neighbouring countries are diversifying into tourism and uh, you know and, and technology and stuff like that. And it'll hide. Um, it'll it'll hide all the news stories about how they torture people. <laughs> come to our country. We will give you <laughs> that. Sounds Russian. But anyways, uh, come, come to our country and enjoy <laughs> our beautiful beaches. And uh, you know, th- th- there's no um, there's no hanging here. We're on about and enjoy the beach. You know, just yeah, just you know, chill. Uh, uh, but yeah, it, I mean, it's it's a good point. I mean, I often wondered why billions and billions and billions of pounds was being spent in these middle eastern countries for like you know for, for tourism and then it hit me it was like oh wait because they're always running out like oil will run out at some point and they've got to have some kind of you know some kind of safety feature so um yeah man that that i think i think that's a fair point